Hi, welcome to Tots Plus. My name is Bob Flisser. When you have a long structured document in Microsoft Word and you need to format it, you could format it manually and go to all of the titles and headings and subheads and format them by choosing font and size and color and all that. But an easier way is to apply the formatting using styles. Now, if you're not familiar, a style is a mixture of formatting that you can apply over and over again, kind of like painting a wall. And Word has built-in styles that you can use and modify, and you can also go and create your own. There are several advantages to using styles in Microsoft Word. The first is that you can be sure that all of the headers, subheads, paragraphs, and all that have the same correct, consistent formatting. The second reason is that it's faster to apply a style than to apply all of the formatting individually. And what's really great is that if you need to change what the style looks like, maybe you want some of the text to have a different color or different size, all you have to do is change the definition of the style, and then like dominoes, boom, 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 all of the text that's tagged with that style will change immediately. Third reason is navigation. This is really great. When you enable the navigation pane in Windows, or it's called the document map pane in the Mac edition, you'll get automatic bookmarks, and you can click the bookmarks in the pane on the left side to navigate through the document. The fourth reason is that styles will help you create a table of contents automatically with just a few clicks. I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial because I have a full tutorial about it right here in Tuts Plus. If you go to the top of this article in the Tuts Plus website, click my name, and somewhere in there you'll see my Word Table of Contents tutorial. If you want to follow along this tutorial using your own Word files, that's great. Go right ahead. Or if you like, you can download a zip file that's on this page on the Tuts Plus website. The zip file contains two Word documents that we're going to use. The first one I have open on my screen here, you see is called Lunar Laser Ranging, and it's a public domain research document. The other file is called Merging Styles, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. One other thing before we begin. You should know that there are two types of styles in Word. There are what are called paragraph styles, and paragraph styles will apply to a minimum of one paragraph. You can apply it to the entire document if you want. And paragraph styles contain font formatting information, like the typeface, size, color, and so on, but it also contains paragraph formatting information, like is the text left aligned or right aligned and how much space above and below. The other type of style is a character style, and that contains only character font formatting information and does not contain paragraph formatting. So the first thing we want to do is let's turn on the navigation pane if you're using Windows or the map pane if you're using the Mac. I already have it open on my screen here on the left. If you don't, what you could do is up here on the ribbon bar, over here on the right side, click the View tab, and you see over here it says Navigation Pane. Just put a check mark in there. That's all you need to do. If you're using a Mac, up here on top where the toolbar is, you could simply click a little button that'll turn on the map pane. So let's start with our first style. Click here anywhere inside the title. Now you don't have to highlight it. You can if you want, but it's not necessary. When you have your cursor in there, you see over here I have the style section. Now if for whatever reason maybe your toolbar is crowded or your window is narrow and you don't see the style section, you might see styles just as a single icon. At any rate, if you start rolling the mouse over these, you notice that dynamically you get a preview that it changes. Now the preview is only in the Windows version. In the Mac you don't get the preview, you actually have to click. But of course you could always undo. What I want to do is over here on the end of the styles, you have this little down arrow with a hat. You want to click that and that shows you a few more styles. And I'm going to roll over and choose here the title style. So you see immediately we have this formatting. Now you notice nothing's happening on the navigation pane just yet. Title styles don't go in there, but headings and subheads will. So let's go apply a few. So over here we have this one introduction. Click in there and if you need to click this little down arrow and let's apply heading one. And there's a few more. We can scroll down through the document. Here's this number two, Lunar Science. By the way, if you want to use the keyboard shortcut, you could do that. In Windows, it's Control-Alt-1. On the Mac, it's Command-Option-1. And here's this number three. And again, apply, use the shortcut, or click the item, either way. And you notice as you're doing that, you've got these one, two, and three items on here. And now you could click them and go right to that item in the document. So that's what I mean by automatic bookmarks. And this little up arrow thingy there, if you click that, that will go to the title. 
Okay, so now let's apply the Heading 2 styles. As you scroll down, there's a few more of these. You see like this one, Fluid Core Movement of Inertia. You could apply Heading 2 to that. Whole Moon Movement, and here I'll press the shortcut, Control-Alt-2, or on the Mac, Command-Option-2. Or Oblateness, the same thing. And I'll just finish this up here. And now I see, before I miss this, number four is a heading one. And now I have these headers. Now the one, two, and three is not applied by the style. That's just part of the text. But now you can click any of these items here, any of these heading twos. And notice when your mouse pointer is in a heading two, it shows it up here. When your mouse pointer is here in heading one, it shows it up there. And now let's go back up to the top. So you can see here everything, all of the headings and subheads are now formatted. So what if you want to change the formatting of this style one? And one thing I want to do is I want to make this gap here between the number and the text a little smaller. That's a tab, and that's an automatic tab. Maybe you can see up here on the ruler that it's an automatic half inch. I want maybe a quarter inch or something like that. And also I want to change what the text looks like. So you could click in any one of these, one, two, three, or four, it doesn't matter which one. And the way to modify the style is to modify text that's tagged with the style, and then we can redefine the style. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tab stop up there. So on the ruler, now make sure the ruler is visible. If not, you could go to the View tab to make it visible. And I have this thing over here, if you're not familiar with tabs, kind of looks like a letter L. That is a left tab stop. And I'm going to click in the ruler right about there somewhere roughly about a quarter inch. See, now you see the text moves. And now let's reformat the characters. I'll just select it. And maybe I'll make this, say, Franklin Gothic Demi. That looks good. And I'll change the color a little bit. Maybe I'll make that a dark navy blue. Okay, there you go. So now this is my reformatted heading one. But none of the others have changed. These are the heading ones that we haven't changed. So now let's redefine the style. Make sure your cursor is somewhere in that heading one. And up here in the style section, click the right mouse button. And up here at the top of the pop-up menu where it says update heading one to match selection, do that. Click. And nothing happens yet. But now when you go down and look at the remaining heading ones, now you see they all changed immediately. So there's no room for human error. If you want to practice on your own, changing the heading twos, go right ahead. I said earlier that another type of style is a character style. So if you scroll down underneath this picture here, we have a caption, figure one, blah, 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 and here's an A and here's a B. What I want to do is apply a style to where it says figure one A and then B, and then down below there's another caption for another picture. So we're not going to affect the entire paragraph, just some of the text within it. So let's select just that figure 1A, and I'm going to make it, let's say, bold and italic. Leave it selected, and you see up here in the style section, as far as Word is concerned, this is just the normal style that we have some additional formatting applied. So what you want to do instead is, down over here, see you have this little kind of downward pointing arrow to 45 degree angle. You want to click that. If you're using a Mac, you don't have that. You have another little icon immediately to the right of the style section. So when you click that, you have the style panel coming up. And it might be docked. It might be floating around. And you see, this shows you even more styles than the styles that are available up here in the section. What we want to do here, though, is we want to create a new style. So down here on the bottom, you have this, these three little buttons. And the first button, if you roll your mouse over, you get this little tooltip that says New Style. If you're using a Mac, you'll have a button that's actually labeled New Style, and it'll be up here towards the top. So let's click that, and we'll give it a name. So I'm going to call this something like Caption, or Caption Figure. And I don't want this to be a paragraph style. Where you see where it says Style Type, so I'm going to click that, and I'm going to choose Character. That's all you need to do. Click OK. And now let's select this little B here. And there is caption figure. It's in this list, and you can select it, but you could also close it because caption figure is now up here in that style section. Now let's scroll down, and we have this other image, and over here we have it says figure two. So click select that figure two, and up here, click that, make that caption figure. If at any time you want to change the formatting, maybe you wanted a different font, maybe you want to remove the italics, 
you can change it just the same way that we changed the Heading 1 style. Simply select it, reformat it, right-click, and update. Now, this is all great, but what if you want to use these styles that you've created or customized in another document? Well, the styles that you create are part of the document, so we have to bring them into another document. First thing you want to do is save. Press Control S or Command S on the Mac or click the little Save button up here. And let's go to the other document that comes with this tutorial. So I'm going to go up here to the View tab, go over here to Switch Windows, and I'm going to go to Merging Styles. If you want to use a keyboard shortcut, that's fine. You can press Control F6 in Windows or Command Accent Mark on the Mac and we'll switch to this other document. Now up here, the Heading 1 style is the same. The title style, well, we didn't modify that. And you notice there is no caption figure. So let's first apply the title style. Now, Heading 1, instead of clicking it and applying Heading 1, let's switch back to the other document. I'll press Control F6 to get there. And I'll go and grab one of these Heading 1s. So I'm just going to click in here. And a couple of ways to do it. I'll go to the Home tab. You could use the Format Painter. Click the Format Painter. And you see your mouse pointer turns to a little paintbrush with a text cursor on it. Let's switch back. Control F6. Switch back here to this document. And I'm just going to paint right over that heading one. If you want to use the keyboard shortcuts, you could press on Windows, Control Shift C to copy the formatting and Control Shift V to paste. On the Mac, you press Command Shift C and Command Shift V. Heading two, we didn't change. So I'll just click that and make that heading two. And now for the figure, let's switch back and I'll grab this here, this figure two. Now I'll use the shortcut. I'll press Control Shift C, switch back over here and I'll select words figure one, and I'll paste the formatting, control shift V, and there it is. And now you notice up here in the style section, we have that caption figure style, and you can see the heading one has now been reformatted. And already the navigation pane is getting set up. So now do you see why I really like styles so much? And styles aren't just in Microsoft Word, they're in Excel, by the way, I have a complete tutorial on using styles in Microsoft Excel right here on Tuts Plus. You could also use styles in Adobe programs and non Microsoft non-Adobe programs like Quark Express. You see, it's so much faster to apply a style than it is to apply all the individual formatting characteristics. There's no chance of human error, so you know your document is going to be consistent, and you get the added benefit of automatic navigation. So if you have a structured Word document that has a lot of text where you want repeated formatting, you definitely want to use styles. I hope you found this helpful and you enjoyed it. Once again, my name is Bob Flisser for Tuts Plus, and thanks a lot for watching.